Hey wonderful people, good morning from Dhaka, Bangladesh. In this episode, I want to talk about something that uh, really I've been thinking about for some time. This is not a fragrance review, but rather uh, one of those episodes I used to do, morning episodes. So it's almost morning here. It's like uh, near midnight, so I'm considering this as a morning thoughts. And I'm gonna be talking about not life and other factors, but I'm gonna be talking about flankers. You know, flankers basically mean uh, fragrance, original fragrance release, and then if that one becomes a hit, they release a few more under the same uh, line, like let's say uh, one fragrance, then they make it intense, they make EDP, then Parfum, Summer, you name it. They have a lot of uh, these flankers that's coming out in recent times and the flankers sometimes can be out of control from different companies. So I would like to discuss what are the um, good aspects, good sides of uh, flankers, what are some of the downside of flankers and uh, what are the type of flankers they actually release. So first of all, I have uh, quite a few fragrances lying here next to me. Uh, some of the major fragrances that I picked up, I wanted to give you some uh, first-hand examples so you understand it better instead of me just telling you what uh, I'm trying to say here. And another thing is, uh, I actually not am going to judge the flankers or reformulations or any kind of formulations, just going to discuss, okay? It's just a sort of like a question thrown to you people that something to ponder upon what do you think i'm gonna leave the question and i want you to think about it like uh, what are your expectations from flankers okay so hopefully you know you to help you choose your fragrance which one to buy which one to try which one to avoid right so these are the main purpose of this video so first of all what are the flankers you know like first of all as i told you let's say a fragrance the first one was released in somewhere let's say 1970 and the fragrance was a big hit it was top seller you name it you know uh, you you can if you, if you talk about classic there are a lot of classics i'll show you one by one but let's say a fragrance was released and after five years it was sold out and it's they keep producing it and bring it back and still you know selling so people will companies will start thinking like oh this is doing well let me do another flanker that's summer flanker or intense version see how that does so how do they do flankers? I think the companies, uh, the trend of flankers has a little bit changed nowadays. Uh, back in the time, I just noticed 90s, 80s, uh, the times before that, sorry, I'm getting a little bit thirsty. <laughs> the lemonade really helps you in the hot uh, summer days. So basically what I'm trying to say, I think back in the 80s, 90s, uh, they used to be much more um, creative, much more, um, risk takers much more how does it not just creative risk taker more uh, daring or bold about their releases basically what that meant was like let's say fahrenheit was a very very gutsy release i'm not gonna say fahrenheit was the only uh, type of fragrance but there were a lot of other safe fragrance around it there were a lot of freshies like cool water you know uh, fragrances like that were around but they released fahrenheit so that was instant hit because of the creativity from dior it was a bold move and followed that success they released a lot of flankers i have owned some of them i tried some of them they have like summer uh the 32 the 32 uh got another flanker then they have absolute they have a puff farm le puff farm so you see they have released a lot of flankers were all of them good no some of them were didn't sell well some of them were limited time release and then just disappear from the shelves and fetching like pretty penny because you know people are collectors and stuff that's a different issue but some fragrances the flankers do not do so well so what are the three type of flankers they make i think according to my uh, not research observation uh, they really sometimes a uh, more intensified version okay of one fragrance like let's say fahrenheit versus fahrenheit le parfum so le parfum is supposed to be like stronger version of the original okay so they try to make an original release then they try to go like a total new release okay which is not intense just intense but that's like a brand new smell under the same name but a lot more uh, relevant to what's happening in the other you know companies or current times you know they follow the trend like say invictus like fahrenheit that would be a disaster <laughs> but what i'm trying to say is they try to make entire different fragrance on the same name but they want to use the name and the fame of the name <laughs> and they want to sell a new fragrance in the same bottle they do that and third, what they try to do is like uh, they try to make a fragrance betterment, you know, like how to say betterment. Intense is not just better. Sometimes they try to make it sexier, like uh, two on two men and they say two on two sexy men. 
what is the purpose to make it like interesting uh, sexy touch to it like it's a lot more playful I'm gonna show you some examples you'll see so they try to do this kind of things with flankers so the last type of flankers one more I could think of is the money money crabs these are very simple to understand they make fragrances they just see like cool water has a thousands of them CK1 they have thousands of them uh, if you go you don't even know how many are exactly there or they I think those companies will be con like confused how many did we release again so many flankers we lost track already so those are like you know if they see they release something for the year 2011 12 every year the sale or not they just keep releasing them sometimes they just smell the same like the one that was released the year before same watermelon same lemon and, you know and the, those are like money grabs so people don't usually buy it who really know about fragrances so let me show you uh, from my uh, experience because I have been in designer game for a very long time and my interest is mostly designers because I have a lot of interesting designers that I love so I'm gonna show you different kind of fragrances and different kind of flankers what they released and if it did reach my expectations level or uh, they did uh, disappoint me but most of the times you're gonna see uh, they the ones that I bought didn't disappoint the ones that I didn't buy perhaps could be disappointment perhaps some new release I'll show you so first of all I would like to show you uh, this fragrance it's nearby from this side so Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamal Lamal you guys know in the community if you've been watching fragrance reviews this is one of the top sellers one of the best fragrances they say based on Francis Jean ever made you know in the designer game and this one followed like after this this one they made more niche version like I'm watch reflection man so not the same but some say this is like a Fougier barbershop kind of a playful mint lavender vanilla you guys know this so at one point it was very popular then one million came and then the other heroes and some other players came and this became kind of dated so they thought like okay let's it's been some years let's let us release something uh, they have been releasing other flankers like uh, fresh some other flankers but they really wanted to go after the clubbing because clubbing scenario this was doing it before but uh, the time changed so they released this one and I tell you one thing this one was huge uh, success this is Jean Paul Gaultier Ultra Mint. among all the flankers of La Mall this one sold the most because this one is uh, beast mode performance it's even much better than La Mall what it is right now in the market this is much stronger than this in performance in terms of smell it's much more modernized you can still detect that vanilla at the background the bubblegum sweetness that you also got from this but this lot more sweet and it was a lot more modern so the both of them really became like favorite of mine uh, i do like some of the other flankers like the essence superman and they have the new one navy and there's one more i forgot uh the lebo i think they are all decent but uh, among all the flankers Ultramil was my favorite even more so than the original Le Mans. so actually the new flanker overshadowed the success of not success let's say the popularity of Le Mans, but it can be up for debate like which one is better to me I reach for this lot more Le Mans, I found it like sometimes Ultramil all the time in the winter so that's one story no problem with the flanker there <clears throat> so next one is going to be very very big fragrance in the community this fragrance I'm gonna take a little bit of time so you can understand what I'm trying to say the next fragrance I'm gonna show you is Bleu de Chanel I have this much left only about 7 ml left this is my bottle in Malaysia I really had a dream to buy this because fragrances were so expensive when I started collecting Malaysia so so expensive so finally I got it and uh, the fragrance is absolute love for me in terms of smell I cannot tell you enough how much I love Bleu de Chanel but <laughs> Dior Sauvage came afterwards overshadowed it in terms of pricing and performance that took away Bleu de Chanel's magic <laughs> so Bleu de Chanel went for flankers as well so this fragrance very nice very very beautiful uplifting grapefruit you know it has that incense thing going lemon uh, it's very masculine fresh kind of like a kind of like a, like a colony smell but it was a huge success so they released this one EDP the EDP I found initially to be very very same similar to the EDT but with time I happen to realize like the EDP actually means EDP it's much stronger version of the EDT but some countries like when they release a perfume or intense like in France uh, they I heard the French people say the intense doesn't really mean it's intensified version of a fragrance but a lot more uh, depth in the perfume itself performance could be worse than the original but in this case Bleu de Chanel it's 
just a stronger version of the EDT. This one is just like, imagine two bottles of EDT, they poured it in one bottle, made it EDP. So that did not change the smell like La Mola and Tremil. They stick to the same smell. Perhaps this is a, uh, like you can just, like here and there a little bit difference here and there, but not much deviation from the original. And then the last one they attempted, I have a sample of it, I never bought the whole bottle. I don't know why, because it's perhaps more expensive. That is Blood Chanel Parfum, this one, the Parfum version. So this fragrance I reviewed, I really loved, I really love this perfume, make no mistake. This is really perhaps the best version of Blood Chanel. Performance is great, smell is a little bit more refined, a little bit more uh, fresher in terms of uh, smell. It's a little bit fresher, but the price point wise, this is a lot more expensive than their other two Blood Chanel. So the whole story of Blood Chanel line, they did not do much deviation, okay, in terms of smell. They stick to the original DNA, made it stronger over time. That's the main uh, game I saw with Blood Chanel. So coming to the next one, example-wise, I am going to show you three more, I think. Three more or four more. Okay, three more. This is one of my favorite classic fragrances of all time. If you talk about colognes and if you do not mention this, like, you're going to be really a hypocrite. Like, Aqua Digio is... Uh, big daddy of fresh perfumes, aquatic, fresh, marine-like, spicy, floral, you name anything category. This fragrance, it's always going to be like remembered as a like a vintage goodness. This is the reason we have a lot of freshies out there. Like, you know, in the market from different companies, they try to copy this. The Imperial is 360 degree red, numbers of clones of this perfume. So this one, EDT, like the formulation, uh, through severe reformulation, they actually kind of killed the performance of Aqua Digio, which used to last before the vintage of this. But the current formulation of this, you can still find it, but it's more suitable for, you know, indoors, which is the case with a lot of designer perfumes. So what they did, they re released a lot of flankers. Let me show you two. And uh, I had actually almost all of them. I sold off the one that I owned. Uh, uh, Aqua Di Geo Profumo Special Blend. I used to have that. That one, one of the best. But I did not reach for it, so I sold it. Apart from that, Aqua Di Geo released Essenza and Aqua Di Geo Profumo. I have 180 ml of both. My Essenza sadly ran out almost. I cannot find a bottle of it anymore. Very sad that this fragrance is the best version of Aqua Di Geo in the market and they discontinued it. I do not know why. This really annoys me, you know. Perhaps it's their marketing policy. It did not sell well. God, seriously, I mean, bring back Essenza, you know, <laughs> um, so good. It has even better in terms of like, you see, magnetic cap, they give, and they give a nicer bottle, and even the Aquario Profimo looks so good. It also has the magnetic top, very nice, these plates at the bottom. These are all like, I would say, uh, improvement upon the original. And they stick to basically the same DNA. This made it stronger with Essenza. Profume, they made it a little bit darker, a bit more spicier for nighttime wearing, perhaps good for winter. So they did not deviate much more from that original DNA. But they released one flanker, they went after money. And this one, I liked it, but not as a flanker of Aqua I liked it as a fragrance on its own. That is the Aqua Digio Absolute. So this one also has a flanker now, uh, Aqua Digio Absolute forgot the name, it's a darker bottle of it. So this is pretty much in the same line with Invictus Aqua, a lot of this Hawas, a lot of this fruity, fresh, uh, very fruity, kind of a sweet, summery sort of fragrance. And it has a very tiny bit of Aqua Digio in this. I like wearing it. I got compliments, uh, decent performer, but nothing to do with Aqua Digio. So sometimes they do have classic example of deviating from the original DNA and the, uh, make something that actually is doing well in the market, the DNA, and try to go after money. So this fragrance, I'm not sure how this did, but I think it didn't do as well as the Profumo one, okay? So Absolute is another example of flanker. So let's move on to <laughs> next. Uh, I think we have three, one, two, uh, three, four. We have four examples left. Let's move on to a big one, Dior Sauvage. This is, I don't know which fourth, fifth bottle of mine, 200 ml. I'm very proud of owning this all the time. This fragrance feels like a proper fragrance in terms of uh, performance. Uh, how consistent it is like it will perform every time even if you get bored of it it will constantly pick up good notice from people it's just not the best this is the reason Blood de chanel sort of like got overshadowed in the market and people do not talk about Blood de chanel anymore because of dior sauvage it's a lot more modern caribbean bergamo amrox and the fragrance is just a constant performer you know through year throughout all year i'm sorry about that the voice okay so the thing is they released how many versions of it they released a very cool spray 
and that's just Jeremy's channel. I never seen anybody else mentioning. I heard it's a good one, but it's just a body spray. So then really is EDP. I own the EDP, I reviewed it. You can check out my review on it. So EDP was sweeter, less loud, less projecting than the EDD. Even I said this is better than EDP uh, for the whole year. EDP is better for winter. So now, now they release puff on version. And what they did, I hear from people, is that they did not change the smell that much. It's pretty much same DNA, perhaps sweeter. They did here and there a little bit tweak and they did not change the formula much, just made it stronger. So Dior Sauvage, which is a popular DNA, they're trying to cash in, but they are playing it safe. They're not, they're saying like, you know, this is selling well, make it stronger version people who are loyal to it. Let's say they finish the bottle of Sauvage EDP. They're going to go for the EDP just to make it a, you know, kind of like a betterment on the original. Perhaps after the EDP finish, they go for perform. So how the performance gonna do uh, once i get my bottle i can up, uh, upgrade like update you so dior savage in this case did not play so much with the formulation they stick to what's safe then the next one this case was very sad uh victor and Rolf spice bomb you guys know this is a very very good clubbing fragrance spicy sweet uh it got leather it got pink pepper it got tobacco very lovable fragrance in winter time it really picks up compliments very, very playful then they have a Spice Bomb Fresh version, Extreme version or something like the black one with the orange color one, forgot the name. And then the release recent times, this one, uh, the Night Vision. I will tell you again, these two have nothing in common. This, the green one, is just a beautiful bottle, green bottle. I bought it for the bottle itself. I use it a lot. I really like using it for the summer days, nights. Very nice Ambroxan, which gives it a performance, but doesn't feel anything like Spice Bomb. So they actually again went for what's happening in the market, which is more popular DNA, Aqua Digio, Absolu, uh, perhaps you talk about Invictus, Invictus Aqua, Hawas, or even Dunhill Icon Racing. So they went that sort of DNA. This smells very, very familiar DNA. So this fragrance, I don't know how it's doing now, but they released something totally what's market is trending, okay? Now, the next two, the last two examples I'm gonna show you. These two examples are gonna be I have few flankers of those, but um, basically the original ones, I'm going to show you the two. Sick Eternity and uh, David of Cool Water. Recent times, David of, uh, I think, released the intense version. And I was waiting for much more stronger <laughs> version of this. Like, the DNA is so good. It's such a classy. You guys know if you used it, man, the fragrance is just that bitter water, lavender, a blue green all those things happening is very fresh but does not last so i was kind of hoping that cool water i used a uh, wave i used the uh, cool water summer i used cool water what are the some of the other ones i did have few flankers but they did not reach my expectations because they went more for you know mainstream what's happening but when they in released the intense i was thinking like intense is going to be just double the performance of this just same smell so that was my expectation from cool water but my brother bella actually bought it and I saw another review, both of them reviewed. They said this, the new version is just sweeter. It's like a winter fragrance. I'm like cool water for winter fragrance. That's when I became disappointed. And it's expensive at this point, $55 plus tax and all that. So I did not pull the trigger on cool water. If I sniff it, if I like it, I haven't smelled it, but I actually hope for stronger version of this exact formulation, just stronger, darker, and maintain that sea accord, you know, like freshness of the water, you know, deep sea diving um so the intense unfortunately went with that trend last but not least i'm very excited about sick eternity they released an intense edp version i think uh, that if that fragrance maintains the greenness of this perfume you know it's it's all about the grassy feel from it it's like masculine you know it's like kind of on the green side fresh you know uh, vetiver and all that it's a classic man fragrance but if it maintains this original smell, I would be really, really happy. And I actually want to get a more intensified version of this particular perfume. I don't want it to smell like One Million or Sauvage because it will lose its originality. So some fragrances, you want that original DNA to stay. So basically, in the end, uh, the, as a conclusion, what I'm trying to say is the fragrances, uh, if you're bored of one fragrance, the company is, you know, they're going to make new one and you're going to have expectation. What is the expectation? You want stronger version? You want a modern version, like nothing to do with the old one? Just something that's doing well in the market? Or you want just like, you know, uh, I don't know what you're looking for in a flanker, okay? So for me, I look for 
betterment in a perfume. I think that is an ideal example. I'll just tell you. The classic best example I can give you among all these are Lamal and Ultramil. This is an improvement over original Lamal and they did a fantastic job with this. It's sweet, pear, pineapple, a lot more interesting stuff. It even took down Eros, one million, became number one king. It's even more favorite of mine than Dior Sauvage. So if they can make something creative, they actually think instead of just, you know, just copy the uh, what's running in the market, that becomes a very interesting game for me. And uh, that's the way to do flankers. I think if you have creativity like Dior Fahrenheit did, this perfume did, you're gonna make money and you're gonna get people's respect. So nowadays I think it's the main concern is money and uh, just keep selling because people are gonna be buying just the name of the fragrance, okay, like the brand name. But if you can release something like Fahrenheit and you just keep releasing some flankers which are creative, different enough from the original, but it, it stays like good that would be a good flanker release so that's pretty much it and just something to ponder upon hopefully you guys think about it before just blind buying and the new flanker which is you have no clue what it is right so thanks for watching guys i'll perhaps do one more video tonight if i feel like it see you soon and thanks for watching Bye bye